Hello and welcome to Path of Learning, a Path of Exile series focused on teaching new players the fundamentals of the game's underlying mechanics, while also teaching veteran players how to leverage those mechanical interactions to avoid dying, improve your build, and much, much more. Path of Exile is a game where there's always something new to learn. I've played Path of Exile since the start of the open beta, and every league, multiple times a league, I learn something new about the game and how many things interact and work together. The series is going to be an attempt to share all of that knowledge. If I tried to share all that information at once, it would be more than anyone could take in, in one sitting. Don't watch them all back to back. Take a break and spend some time digesting the information in today's video before you come back for another one tomorrow. Once you master the fundamentals and understand the various mechanical interactions between the different base elements in PoE, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can go farther than you ever previously imagined. With that in mind, Path of Exile is a constantly changing game. So over time, some of the specific examples used in this video might end up slightly out of date. However, the concepts themselves will still remain accurate and will still help you get a better understanding. So don't worry too much about the specifics. I might say something like 53 when the number was changed to 46. It's still going to work the same way, and if it doesn't, I'll update the video at some point in the future. So today, I'm going to be explaining how resistances work in Path of Exile, starting with the basics, then moving on to more advanced topics such as capped versus uncapped resistances, what ignoring resistances means, and how increased and reduced resistances function a little differently than you might initially think. If there's ever a point where you're confused or the information feels basic, feel free to use the chapters to skip ahead or go back and rewatch something that you saw previously. To start with, what are resistances in Path of Exile? Resistances are a form of damage reduction. They affect elemental or chaos damage. For example, chaos resistance will reduce the damage you take from chaos damage. Fire resistance will reduce the damage you take from fire damage. Very often, you will see resistances in Path of Exile categorized as elemental, which refers to fire, cold, and lightning. So if an enemy attacks you and attempts to damage you, let's say they hit you with a fireball, your fire resistance is going to mitigate some of that damage. If they smack you with a sword, and that sword happens to be charged with lightning, say they're using lightning strike, then your lightning resistance will mitigate some of that damage. By default, you'll have negative 60% to all resistances after you defeat Act 10 Katava, not accounting for any gear you might be wearing or passives on the tree. By default, your resistances are capped at 75%, meaning no matter how much resist you have on gear, the number will never go above 75 in terms of your effective damage mitigation. By default, the negative cap is minus 200%, meaning no matter how much negative resistance you have, it will never go below that value. And currently, there's no circumstance under which a capped resistance can exceed 90%. This means resistances will apply no more than 90% damage reduction at any given time, based on the number which I'll explain shortly. Now let's talk about a slightly more practical example of how resistances work in Path of Exile, because there's a very big common misconception about resistances that causes a lot of grief for new players. If you're a veteran and you feel like you understand why you take damage and why things are dangerous, feel free to skip over this section. However, if you're a new player and you're sometimes wondering, why did I die to this enemy but not that enemy, this might help explain it. The common misconception is, any number above 0% is good and mitigates the damage that you take. However, when GGG balances content, they do so assuming that you have capped resistances. In other words, that the number is 75%. So the way you have to think about it is, any resistance which is below 75% is causing you to take more damage than intended, and any resistance that is above 75%, ignoring uncapped resistances, is causing you to take less than intended damage. Let's go back to that fireball example earlier. If an enemy hits you with a fireball, and GGG intends for you to take 1000 damage, the fireball will deal 4000 fire damage. So if you have 50% fire res, you'll take 2,000 damage, or twice the intended damage. And this could very well be lethal, especially if you're taking multiple hits in rapid succession, or if it's a boss ability that hits much, much harder. On the other hand, if you have 90% fire resistance, which could be obtained by getting increased maximum fire resistance or increased maximum elemental resistances, then you would take 
400 fire damage, which is 40% of the expected damage and very likely to be trivial. A couple times now I've mentioned capped versus uncapped. Capped resistance is by default 75. Uncapped resistance is the total value of resistances on all your items from your tree and from any additional sources like auras. So if you have 50% fire res and you put on a pair of boots that have 40% fire res, you go up to 90% fire res. However, your cap is still 75. So in terms of mitigating damage, you only have 75% fire res. The reason that this is an important distinction is if you're cursed with elemental weakness, that will reduce your fire resistance. It reduces fire, cold, and lightning. Therefore, if you only had 75% and 75%, you might get reduced below 75 and not fully mitigate damage. But because you have 90, if an elemental weakness curse reduces your resistances by 10%, you're still capped and you still take intended damage. There are also certain items such as Choir of the Storm or the Formless Inferno, which specify the wording uncapped resistances. What this means is the effect on the item would change based on whether or not you had 100% or 200% resistance, regardless of what amount of that resistance is actually mitigating damage. Capped resistances, on the other hand, start at 75 and can be increased with the maximum resistance stat. The word maximum here is used to denote the fact that it's modifying the cap, not modifying the resistance on your character. If you have 90% fire res, and you gain plus 2% to maximum fire resistance, you will still only have 90% fire res. But now, 77% fire resistance is applied to incoming damage, which means you'll mitigate roughly 8% more fire damage than you would before. So how do you get resistances in Path of Exile? The most common source is suffixes on gear. Almost every item has multiple suffixes which can roll that will be able to increase your fire, cold, lightning, all elemental or chaos resistance, and there's a few modifiers such as fire and lightning or cold and chaos which can also roll on these items under special circumstances. Additionally, a bismuth flask will increase your elemental resistances while it's active, an amethyst flask will increase your chaos resistance while it's active, and ruby, sapphire, and topaz flasks will increase fire, cold, and lightning resistance respectively while it's active. Additionally, you can use purity of elements or purity of ice, fire, and lightning to again raise resistances generally or raise specific resistances. Purity of elements comes with the additional bonus of making you completely immune to elemental ailments, but that's a story for a future video. And the individual purities give you not only resistance, but also max resistance. So if you have purity of ice on, not only do you help to cap your cold resistance, but you become far more resistant to cold damage by raising your maximum. This is important because there are a number of effects in Path of Exile which modify resistances. Most commonly, when you're gaining resistances from an item, it's a flat value, plus 40% to resistances, so you simply add the current and new number. Similarly, curses add a flat penalty to your resist. If you have negative 25% to fire resist and you already had 50%, you simply subtract the 25% from the 50% and get the new number of 25% fire resistance. This is also exactly how Kataba's resistance penalties work. Exposure is a debuff in Path of Exile that lowers resistances, and this also applies a simple negative. So if you expose an enemy, lowering their fire resistance by 10%, whatever the number was previously, you take away 10, and that determines your damage when damaging that enemy. The same kind of math can be done when the enemy exposes you and lowers your resistances accordingly. Penetration, on the other hand, works a little bit differently, but can be equally dangerous. Penetration does not modify your resistances, because penetration punches through your capped resistance. So if you have 90% cold resistance, and you get hit by one of Shaper's Frostbolts that penetrate 25% of cold res, well, your cap is 75, and it's penetrating 25, meaning your effective cap for the purposes of that hit is 50. You can think of this as taking double damage from that attack, since you effectively have 50% cold resistance against that skill. However, if you are standing in one of Shaper's Vortexes at the same time, that Vortex is not penetrating your resistance. Only hits can penetrate resistances, and furthermore, only hits that have some sort of penetration effect. This is baked into certain monster abilities, or granted to players through support gems, ascendancy features, notables on the tree, or mods on your items. But because the Vortex you're standing in is damage over time, it would not be able to penetrate your resistances, thus you would fully resist it with your 75% cold res.
Now, for the rest of the video, I'm going to be talking about some more advanced topics. These are going to be primarily aimed at veteran players. However, if you're new here, you might still find them to be useful. And as always, feel free to reference them at a future time. Before I do though, a quick reminder that if you found this video to be helpful, please leave a like and suggest it to a friend, especially if you're new to Path of Exile and wondering how things work. Now, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. Making a deep dive like this is definitely not easy, and I'm very glad that my channel has gotten to the point where I can dedicate the time and effort to making this, while also keeping up with all my other responsibilities. If you want to support and help to make more videos like this possible, you can do so over on Patreon or via YouTube channel membership, but a little more about that at the end. For now, let's talk about some important examples of how resistances function in Path of Exile, some exceptions to normal rules, and all sorts of stuff like that. Now, I mentioned earlier that one of the most common ways to get resistances is suffixes on gear, but there are also ways that you can raise your maximum resistance. Raising your maximum resistance is an incredibly effective way to mitigate elemental damage. So Purity of Fire, Ice, and Lightning will all grant you maximum elemental resistances of the matching type. Certain items, such as shields, can roll maximum resistance as a suffix. And it should also be noted that you do get up to plus 3% maximum chaos resist on a shield, it's not just the elemental ones. You also get a lot of options for maximum resistances via Eldritch Implicits. You can roll all maximum resistances or elemental specific resists on your chest piece. You can also roll maximum cold res as an Eldritch Implicit on your gloves, maximum lightning as an Eldritch Implicit on your helmet, and maximum fire as an Eldritch Implicit on your boots. For more details about this, look at PoEDB or Craft of Exile. Both will be down in the description below. There are also rare cases where you can completely ignore resistances. For example, if you have a keystone passive Chaos Inoculation, you don't need to worry about Chaos Res, because that keystone says you are immune to Chaos Damage. If you are immune to Chaos Damage, it doesn't matter if the Chaos hit is 100 or 1 million. You simply won't take damage from it. Another example of this is if you got 100% of Cold and Lightning Damage taken as Fire Damage, such as through the Tempered by War Keystone. Because you no longer take Cold or Lightning Damage, you don't need cold or lightning resistance. But do be warned, some of these effects will specify from hits, meaning a damage over time effect would bypass that damage shift, thus leaving you vulnerable to potential death. Another interesting case is ignoring resistances. This is an effect that you see, such as on the Inquisitor's Inevitable Judgment, or on the item Eternity Shroud. Ignoring resistances is not the same as lowering or penetrating them. When a resist is ignored, it is treated as zero. You cannot raise it above that, and you cannot lower it below that. It will always be zero, no more, and no less. Increases and reductions to resistances, on the other hand, are a very interesting and somewhat complicated topic. If you're a beginner, this probably doesn't apply to you, unless you're considering playing an Eye of Malice build. But increases and reductions to resistances are something that I've seen trip a lot of people up. An increase to resistances is not a flat change, it's a multiplier. Remember earlier, if I said that you had 50% fire res, and you had minus 10, you then have 40%? Well, let's reframe that example and talk about increased or reduced resistances. It's a multiplier, and it also applies regardless of whether or not the number is positive or negative. If you have 100% fire resistance, this would be your uncapped resistance, and you have 50% increased fire resistance, you get 100 times 1.5, or 150% fire resistance. Now similarly, if you have negative 60% fire res, and you have 50% increased, it's negative 60 times 1.5, or negative 90% fire res. You've now found a way to take fire damage even more effectively. And reduced resistances are the same, but with an inverse multiplier. If you have 100% fire res, and 50% reduced fire res, then your fire resistance is 100 times 0.5, or 50%. But if you have negative 60% fire resistance, and 50% reduced, you get negative 60 times 0.5, or negative 30% fire resistance. In other words, increases in resistances attempt to move the number farther away from the zero point, whereas reductions in resistances always attempt to bring the number closer to the zero point and it multiplies against other sources of flat resistances. If there's a stat in PUE that said more or less, this would be an additional multiplier. So let's just say you had 100% fire res and 50% less 
and 50% reduced. This would be 100 times 0.5 times 0.5, leaving you with 25% fire resistance in the end. This is especially important for players using the Eye of Malice or Doriani's prototype. The Eye of Malice because it increases enemy resistances, which is bad for you if they're positive, but it's good for you if they're already negative. Remember, increases push the number away from the zero point, thus making a negative more negative. It's important for Duryani's prototype because you want your lightning resistance to be as low as possible, ideally with a cap of negative 200%. This way, the enemy's lightning resistance is also negative 200%. And I've seen people in the past take things that reduce their resistances, thinking it would make it more negative. But remember, reductions in resistance bring it closer to the zero point, so it would actually be counterproductive in this case. Once you understand resistances, that can help you understand why certain things are more dangerous. Shaper's Frostbolts, for example, are incredibly deadly because they penetrate 25% of your cold resistance. This effectively lowers your cap by 25%. Remember, penetration acts on the cap, not the uncapped value. Whereas if you have an elemental weakness curse on your map, that lowers your uncapped resistance. If your uncapped resistance is higher than your cap afterwards, you won't take any negatives from the curse. But if it puts your actual resistance below your cap, then you'll start to take more damage than you would have otherwise. Similarly, the map modifier minus percent to maximum player resistances works by lowering your cap, thus causing you to take more damage from all elemental and chaos sources. Understanding the difference between capped and uncapped resistance will also go a long way to understanding why certain enemies are tanky. Much like players, enemies have resistance and they have a resistance cap. So, for example, if an enemy has plus 30% to chaos resistance, if their resistance was already below their cap, it doesn't do anything except make it harder for you to lower their resistance, but you could still penetrate it just as effectively, or of course ignore it. However, if their cap is raised, it will be more difficult to damage them even via penetration, because penetration acts on the cap, and the cap is now higher. Luckily, you can still ignore it, and they won't be able to do anything based on that. It's also important to remember that resistances apply both to hits and damage over time. So fire resistance will help you defend against an enemy's fireball. It will also help you defend against the ignite that fireball inflicted. And further, it might help you prevent yourself from burning to death using Righteous Fire. This is also why for any build such as Righteous Fire or Death's Oath that damages themselves with their own skill, stacking maximum resistance that matches the type of damage they're taking is incredibly effective. The same is true for a hit-based build like Forbidden Right. And finally, there are sometimes unique effects in Path of Exile, which modify how resistances behave. Loreweave is a perfect example of this. It says your resistances are a specific number, and this actually works in a lot of ways very similar to ignoring resistance, where the resistance is set at that number, and cannot be modified further. So Loreweave acts on your maximum resistance to set it at a specific number such as 78. What this means is if the map had minus 12% to all resistances, that would be ignored, because Loreweave has said your resistance is 78. Similarly, if you put on Purity of Ice and tried to raise your maximum cold res, that would be ignored as well. Loreweave has said your maximum resistances are 78, therefore they are still 78. The maximum cannot be raised or lowered, however, the uncapped resistance can. So if you have no fire res on gear, even if you're wearing a Loreweave, you're going to be taking a ton of damage from fire and probably having a bad time. And Melding of the Flesh is another interesting example of an item that acts on your maximum resistances. In the case of Melding, what it says is all of your maximum elemental resistances are equal to the highest. So let's say you're using Melding of the Flesh and you have a Leadership's Price Amulet. The Leadership's Price Amulet grants you plus three to maximum fire. It grants you no lightning res and minus three to max cold. With just Leadership's Price, your maximum fire res would be 78, your maximum lightning would be 75, and your maximum cold would be 72. When you're wearing Melding of a Flesh, all three maximum resistances would now be the same value, based on whatever your highest is, in this case based off of fire res. And that concludes Path of Learning Lesson 1, Resistances in Path of Exile. Whether you're a beginner or a veteran player, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully it goes a long way to explaining things that you're curious about in regards to resistances. But remember, your learning journey doesn't end here. Not only will there be more episodes in this series, but if you ever have any more questions, I strongly encourage you to look at things like the mod pools over on PewDB, 
or to look at the wiki pages. There's a lot more information on the wiki that simply isn't conducive to being included here, such as listing all the items that have resistances on them and how much they have. I mean, I guess I could read out a list like that, but it probably wouldn't be particularly interesting. And so if you're curious what unique helmets have resists, the wiki is a great place to go and might answer some other questions that you have. And so I only have one more question for you. Do you feel like you fully understand resistances now, or are you curious about something else? If so, feel free to ask down in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your support helps keep me independent and allows me to turn down things like sketchy mobile game sponsorships. You can do so for as low as $1 a month over on Patreon. Or if you want to support me completely for free, then you can join the community by hopping into my Discord, link below. If you want more content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts. It's a place that I use to review games, ramble my way through video essays, and a lot more. Or of course, you can just click the suggested video in the card right now. I hope you learned something today, and maybe I'll see you again sometime soon.